Hello, we're going to have a look today at our second, uh, sorry, our third chemistry lesson, uh, and that's going to be looking at how we measure the rate of a chemical reaction and what we mean by the rate of a chemical reaction uh, and how we can use this experiment to see the effect of concentration on the rate of a chemical reaction. Um, when we think about what the word rate is, uh, rate is actually equal to um, uh, effectively the speed of the reaction. Um, in this case, we're going to be looking at uh, the volume of gas produced per second. So if we think about volume and second there, volume we're going to need to be able to measure the volume of our gas being produced. Um, and per second means we're going to need to time it. So let's have a look at the actual experiment. This is the experiment we are going to do uh, when we get back to work. So this experiment, we take a conical flask and into that conical flask, we put out uh, a piece of magnesium. So a piece of magnesium ribbon. And then we would need to measure out a volume, a set volume of hydrochloric acid. So there's my bottle of hydrochloric acid, HCl. And here is my measuring cylinder. Typically, we'd measure about 25 cubic centimetres, 25 cm cubed of hydrochloric acid in our measuring cylinder. And then that will be put into uh, our uh, conical flask. And that reaction produces hydrogen gas. Now from that we need to measure how quickly that hydrogen gas is produced. And the way we do this is we get a big bowl of water and we turn or put into it another measuring cylinder uh, that has been also filled with water. And we have a tube coming out of our conical flask and that goes into the bottom of the measuring cylinder so I'm just going to draw on here that we've got uh, just water in here and that's going to push as the gas is produced it's going to push the water out and fill it up with hydrogen gas don't forget also on here to make that make that airtight I will need to put a bung on the measuring cylinder so let's just think about this one more time. We've got a trough or big bowl of water with a measuring cylinder that's also full of water. That has a tube going into it. Um, on the other end of the tube, we've got a conical flask with a piece of magnesium and our measured volume of hydrochloric acid. As the gas is produced, it will go through the tube and push the water, uh, push the water out of the measuring cylinder. And we will also need a stopwatch uh, for us to be able to measure how long it takes to produce that. We'll talk more in more detail about exactly how we do that in future lessons, but that's fundamentally what we're uh, what we're looking at here. So, let's think about um, the type of graph that would be produced as a result of this experiment. We're just going to going to do a sketch graph here. So we would look at the volume of gas produced over time. And what we would see is a graph that looks like this. So at the beginning of the reaction, the reaction is very fast because the gradient is steep. And then over the course of a reaction, that uh, reaction slows down. This is something we're going, going to talk about in more detail in a future lesson. What we're really interested in today is that we have an understanding of how this experiment works. So just as a review, we're looking at the rate of this chemical reaction and the rate is the speed of the reaction. We need to work out how much gas, in this case, how much hydrogen gas is being produced every second. Here's our experiment, 
and I'll be using an upturned measuring cylinder filled with water to work out the um, volume of gas being produced and then we have a stopwatch to measure uh, the time intervals. What we'd actually do is we would probably measure the volume being produced every 10 seconds and this is what our graph would look like. So how can we use this experiment to look at the effect of concentration? So let's think about our experiment again. So we started with a bottle of hydrochloric acid but this time we're going to change the concentration of hydrochloric acid. So last time we put 25 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid in, this time we're going to put 12.5 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid in. And now we're also then going to add some water and we'll add 12.5 cubic centimetres of water. So what's happened this time is the concentration of hydrochloric acid is half what it was before. If we look back before, we had 25 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid that went into our conical flask. This time we've got 12.5 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid and 12.5 cubic centimetres of water. So the total volume is still 25 cubic centimetres, as it was there, but the amount of hydrochloric acid is half, which means the concentration is half. We would then take this and put this into our experiment here. Now for this second experiment, our graph would look different. What we would see in our graph is the uh, gradient at the beginning would be more shallow, so it would be uh, less steep, so the rate of reaction is slower, and the graph would finish at half of the distance that it did before. So this is our graph for a higher concentration, and this is our graph for a lower concentration. The last thing we need to think about are the variables in this experiment. So the independent variable is the variable that we are changing. And the variable that we change is the concentration of hydrochloric acid. The dependent variable is the one that we're going to measure, and we're measuring the volume of hydrogen gas produced every 10 seconds. Now we need to think about control variables. There's three obvious control variables here. The temperature, which we'd measure, uh, we'd need to keep the same. So if we did it at room temperature, we'd have the same uh, same uh, results every time. Uh, sorry, same. We'd control that variable every time. The total volume of hydrochloric acid, and I'm going to write the symbol for hydrochloric acid there as HCl, and the mass of magnesium. Notice here, I haven't said amount. I need to be very specific. I've said total volume of hydrochloric acid and the mass of magnesium. That is an amount, but the, we, we, when we talk about solutions, we talk about their volume and also their concentration, but that in this case is the independent variable. And when we talk about solids, we talk about their mass, and we could also talk about their surface area as well. So I'm going to zoom out so that you can see the whole page just about. I'll make sure that is can't quite see the, t the title, but you should be able to see everything else. I'm going to make sure it's focused. Um, and then there'll be some other work for you to do that goes with this lesson. Thank you very much.